Hi everyone, I'm John Cowan and as I record this, we're back into lockdown in Auckland and uh, that will be impacting some of you in different ways. Maybe it's stressing you out, maybe you're actually enjoying the, the wind down from regular life. I'm not sure, but one thing that I remember reflecting on a lot during the first lockdown was this would be so much harder without modern technology. We use technology for our shopping, communi communicating, entertainment, staying in touch. I love my gadgets. And the thing is, I bet your kids love them even more, even if they're little. Uh, I've seen babies, you know, under one year of age, really quite adept at grinning at the camera and connecting with family through phones. And so technology, it, inevitably, it's going to be a huge part of all our children's lives. So how do we fit into this? We know we're supposed to be a coach and a protector of our children. The tricky bit there is that often our kids end up knowing more about the gadgets than we do, but we're not relieved of the role even because of that. Now, I should really say I I really love gadgets. I'm what they call an early adopter. A new toy comes out, I've got to have it. And uh, that's, I've been that way all my life. But even so, I sometimes feel like I'm swamped by the changes in our world with, that uh, the technology brings. And as a parent, I struggled to know what, you know, what are the real risks? Uh, what can, things can we get out of the other gadgets that are going to help my kids? As I've looked at this, and I've looked at it a lot over the years, mainly, I guess, with uh, school age kids and older, I, my opinion is that the technology is generally a boon. And surveys of New Zealand parents have found the same. They actually think it contributes to family life. Another thing uh, that surveys have shown is that New Zealand parents don't worry that much about the technology. And other surveys show that New Zealand parents in the last 10 years have greatly improved in the way that they um, regulate what their children do online. They keep in touch with what their children are doing online. And so it could well be this is something that modern parents are doing really, really well. Anyway, what I want to do is just encourage you to uh, to be involved in your kids' media diet because it does have impact and there are risks. I'm going to skim over them lightly because sometimes that can get a little bit too morbid. But I do want to mention the risks. and uh, But I do want to repeat that with some good skills, you and your kids are probably going to be just fine. And that's, uh, that's my honest opinion. So what are the risks? The first one that people always think about are predators that will somehow get hold of your kids and do them harm. And of course, there are predators and pedophiles and groomers and fishers. It's a reality in our sick, sad world. And we do need to keep our kids safe from that. It would be the most serious of risks, but I don't know how, it, I, I would be hard pressed to say it's the most prevalent of risks. There are other things that are more likely to happen, but of course, this being such a serious one, we'll talk about how to keep your kids safe there. The other thing that parents often worry about is the content that their kids are going to be exposed to. And there is this big, huge, stinky swamp of pornography and violent material everywhere on the internet. You're never more than a couple of clicks away from seeing something which is going to jar your kid's sense of morals and right and wrong and sow all sorts of sad and unhappy ideas into their head uh, and might even encourage them into behaviour that is really, really unhealthy and, and uh, undesirable. So yeah, that's something to, to watch out for. One thing that I really worry about is that the internet is just swarming with dumb ideas, all sorts of conspiracy ideas and and um, half-baked pseudoscience. And so I'm not going to be talking about this here, but I think that this is one of the big risks that our kids face, that uh, you can trust the stuff that they get from you and that comes from their teachers and reliable sources in the community. But the internet has a way of funneling dumb ideas straight into consumers' heads. And so uh, we just need to be giving our kids a certain degree of uh, healthy scepticism about some of the things they read. Another risk is bullying. I'd rather treat that as a separate topic altogether because there is so much in common between classroom and school, room, school ground bullying and online bullying. It often impacts the same kids, it's the same players. Uh, it's more likely to happen within a child's a, a group of acquaintances, even though it's happening online. And uh, so just to say at this point, um, social skills are a huge way of being able to defend yourself in, 
against bullying, but also our role there, our primary role is support and giving our kids the emotional support because it is so jarring. It is so unpleasant to be bullied. But as I say, I'd like to handle that in a separate uh, a separate one. There are scams that's more likely to impact us than our kids. But hey, if your kids know where your credit card is, you better be careful that they're not being lured into some deal that's going to cost you a lot of money. Privacy issues. Now, this is an interesting one in that kids tend to take their privacy, privacy more seriously than their parents. This is a fascinating thing that I saw that about a half of all kids in the UK have accounts that have social media accounts that their parents are either blocked on or uh, their parents don't know about. And it's not because they want to get up to mischief. It's because they don't trust their parents not to do dumb stuff. They don't trust their parents not to post embarrassing pictures of them or to um, chime in and make silly comments with their friends. And so, uh, could I just say, our kids are probably very, very aware that their online reputation counts. And so, and they're not grateful for the fact that we're pasting, posting uh, pictures of them in the bath and when they were babies online. And so, and just realize everything we post from an early age is there forever. So. Take seriously the fact that we're the custodians of our kids' privacy. And so uh, look after that. But also we do need to wise up our kids about how to be safe and all. And uh, we'll talk about techniques there as well. And the other thing is, of course, that anytime you go online, you're at risk from uh, viruses and things. So kids need to know about not downloading things without your permission. All stuff which uh, you probably get hammered about at work. That applies at home as well. Take, taking a lot of care about what kids um, click on online. It can endanger uh, your online security. This is a risk that parents don't think about enough, I think, and that is that our children are sleep deprived. Our kids are getting an hour or two less sleep than they really need. And the big culprit is bright glass that they're staring at while in bed, looking at their phones and gadgets when they should be sleeping. And uh, this is something we need to take seriously because tired brains don't learn. Tired brains are more likely to have accidents. Tired brains uh, can develop uh, poorly. So uh, please enforce a technology-free bedtime. It's one of the most constructive things you can do, for instance, for their education. Your kids could have the best teachers in the world, but even a brilliant teacher can't teach a tired brain. So please do make sure that your kids have a quieter, darker hour before bedtime. And when bedtime comes, no technology. And also the same goes for eating. What do kids do? What else are kids doing when they're playing on a video game, for instance? And the answer is not very much. They're just sitting there being really sedentary and not moving and perhaps they're just mindlessly eating as well. And this is why there is a very clear linkage between the amount of time kids spend online and how much weight they put on. A very clear link that the kids who eat, or who use technology more, become overweight. And 80% of overweight children go on to become obese adults. And we all know that that leads to health problems and a shorter lifespan. And so if you're thinking, you know, could my gadgets actually really harm my kids? Yes. Yes, of course, there could be the predators and they could be walking out into the road while staring at their phone. But the more likely risk for, from gadgets for your kids is an unhealthier, shorter lifespan just because uh, of the overeating that goes with it. So just put rules around that. And the other big risk, um, there may be other risks, but these are just the ones I want to talk about today, is that kids aren't doing what they should be doing. We don't yet know what the long-term impacts of technology are going to be on their adult lives because the technology hasn't been around long enough to do that research. But we do have lots and lots of research about what does make for a healthy, happy adult life. And that is connecting with family and eating well and doing exercise and doing chores and studying and reading for pleasure and having hobbies and, and a wide range of friendships and activities. And if technology is getting in the way of those things, then our kids' development is going to be impaired. And so very often the thing is, mm, is not to ask, is this doing them harm? Is what is this stopping them from doing? And so I firmly believe that a bit of media in their diet, a bit of gadgetry, a bit of game playing doesn't harm them very much unless it gets in the way of the things that do them good. 
So it's uh, watching what your kids are doing and keeping an eye on the clock while they're doing it. Parents often worry, do I know enough? You know, I can barely plug in a computer. Or I have to get my kids to show me the, the shortcuts on, the, uh, on Microsoft Word and all those sorts of things. You know your kids. You know their, uh, whether their impulse control is good. You know whether they're likely to get into mischief or not. You know whether they've got self-control. You also know about the world. Kids can be brilliant about knowing about the technology and the gadgets, but they don't know enough about risk or creeps, scams, people that might want to do them harm, uh, people that are not telling them the truth. Your adult mature instincts and wise brain is brilliant at that. And your kids need to borrow that from you because they're not good at that. And so the fact that you know your kids, their strengths and weaknesses, and the fact that you know about the world, that is probably enough to keep your kids safe when they go online, even if you don't understand about all the menus and gadgets and buttons that have to be pushed. It's great. Technology can protect your children from the technology. And there's some parents that are very, very skilled in installing watchdog type programs in their computer. Fantastic. That's good. But I believe the real protection comes from the relationship you have with your kids as a parent. Good parenting builds firewalls and antivirus filters in their minds and that's where you really want them to build character in there and self-control in there means that you don't need it so much in the computer itself and so by being a parent and engaging about what they're doing online and talking with them often that's going to be fantastic even if you don't get to grips with the actual technology however it's always good to know more and so I'm going to run over a few things that you could do. About, and uh, so the types of things you need to skill up on is knowing what your kids are doing online and controlling it and how to access parental controls in the different programs and machines they use. So knowing what your kids are doing means that um, uh, I am reluctant for kids to have too much access to the internet in their bedrooms. I think it should be out in the area where you can be supervising. You need to be asking them what they're doing. You need to be setting limits about you can go on these sites and do these programs, but you can't do that. The good thing is the parental controls I'm about to mention can help you do that. Let's get on to them. And there, look, there are parental controls on every gadget your child uses, and that includes the, um, the TV and the, um, the streaming uh, services you use like Netflix and Lightbox and all these others. They, they all have parental controls that you set. It's, they're on your phones, they're on uh, video games, and so you can actually be controlling what your kids do online uh, and with these gadgets, even if you're not directly supervising them. Could I just put in this proviso though, they're not perfect. And clever, motivated kids will sometimes find ways around these things. Um, in fact, if they go online, there's people there willing to tell them how to bypass the safety settings that you set. So you're going to have to, this could be a little area of um, conflict here where you're battling with your kids. But this is more an issue with parents of teenagers. Teenagers, for instance, are very, very motivated to get to pornography. And so you might have to be very, very clever and wise there. But with younger kids anyway, the, the, the parental controls work really, really well. And so let's just have a look at them. One of the ones you can, that is very, very easy to use, it may already be installed on your Microsoft computer. If not, you can download it just by Googling Microsoft Family Safety, is a raft of things that will run in your computer. And what you do is you set up a, a different account for each child and it sets screen time limits. You can program when and for how long they use the computer. It might be they can only use it for an hour in weeknights and three hours a day in the weekends. You can set up filters so that you can limit the type of programs they run and the type of websites that they're allowed to go to. And you can also filter who they have access to over social media. You can review their friends, friend requests and limit what they're doing. You can use it with their, to link up with their phones, to track where, they, where they're going, to make sure that they're um, arriving at places you're expecting them to go. And uh, you could also review at the end of the week or month uh, what your kids are doing online, how much time they're spending, how much time they're doing games and doing research and doing homework. 
and it divides it up for you. So it can be a very, very useful tool for monitoring what kids are up to. Um, YouTube Kids, it's a, you can set, by the way, restrictions on regular YouTube. You can set uh, so that it doesn't show inappropriate material for uh, youngsters, but there's also a special app called YouTube Kids where the programs have been vetted as being appropriate for children of a certain age. So that's good to see. That's something fairly recently. Similarly, uh, Messenger. Messenger Kids uh, is something that is a safer environment for kids to work at. There's far less likely to be creeps and, and uh, people in that zone. So it's a messing, Messenger app that's been designed to keep kids safe. How reliable is it? I don't know, but I've seen it well spoken of. So these things are out there when you hunt for them. Just go to Google and say, you know, parental controls or um, alternative to Facebook for kids or something like this. And you'll find that there are often resources out there that will help you in your parenting. Uh, Netflix Kids. Um, again, when you log in, you don't log in as yourself. You set, make sure the kids log in as in, as in, in for kids and the program selection that they have will all be appropriate for children, supposedly anyway. You are having to trust to a certain extent the standards of the people that do this, but it's at least it's a start. The other thing you can do is set up video games and video pl and, and things uh, to detect the age rating of the games, and your mobile phone has a wide range of um, controls that you access. You can download, uh, you can use the apps built into the phone, you can download extra apps as well. The, the, the tricky thing is um, they can be hard to set and uh, I'll, I'll tell you a bit about how to do that. But games, uh, your, your Nintendos and Xboxes and, and all these things have uh, parental controls that you can access so that and the games come with an age rating. So all of these things help, they're not perfect as I say. But uh, you'll be amazed at how much people have thought about this and seem to be on your side anyway to keep your kids safer. Now, I mentioned that some of them are tricky to use. So how are you going to activate them, especially if you have a, uh, you know, a, a no brand phone or something that you got from the warehouse? Do, do they have parental controls? Yes, they do. They can just be tricky to find. And so the thing to do is to go on YouTube and just type in parental controls and the model of the phone or the gadget that you're wanting to set them on. And some geek will have made a video explaining how to set them. And they're usually pretty good. So um, uh, you use the technology to solve the problem of the technology. YouTube will be able to show you videos on how to do it. Now, con those are content risks. Another risk that uh, people have is, is my kid spending too much time online? And again, the answer is, what else are they doing? Are they sleeping enough, playing with their friends and just playing on their own, using creativity, reading, socializing, daydreaming and doing chores? And so um, that's the best way to work out. If my kid is doing all those things, then they probably need an hour on the Xbox to wind down. They're so busy, said. One of the recommend recommendations is very little technology before the age of two. Maybe it, it uh, displaces regular learning. Maybe it overstimulates their brain. Maybe it, um, it makes parents a little bit less motivated in doing things they should be with their kids. Anyhow, there's a lot of wisdom in letting your kids play with other things before the age of much. Up to the age of five, uh, five probably not more than an hour a day of screen time. And... Um, that might involve TV as well. Um, one of the things that research has shown is that even though there's a lot of educational programs and apps and things for kids, kids don't learn that much from them. Not nearly as much as when you're interacting with them yourself. And um, using the apps with them, that's a different story. But just sitting them down with, the, with your iPad and educational program and hoping that they're on their way to becoming a brain surgeon, it isn't going to happen. They don't also, also, they don't learn as much language as you'd think from watching TV or these programs, even if they're speaking to them. Language is learned in the context of person to person. It's an interaction. And a big thing is the, the quality of programming does matter. And uh, just sitting them in front of some trashy old videos on the telly, it isn't going to do them much good. But some good quality educational material, 
that could help. Uh, that could help, but possibly not as much as uh, people would think they do. How much will they use their gadgets? And a simple answer to that is they'll probably use them as much as you do. This was a fascinating bit of research that came out of the States where they surveyed families and uh, different families use technology a different amount. Some were high technology users, others use them less. But they surveyed how much the parents use technology and how much the kids use technology. And guess what? The number of hours per day was the same for parents and kids, almost exactly. It means that, uh, you know, if you're wanting your kids to use less technology, chances are we have to cut back as well. By the way, the mix of technology is different. Parents tended to watch more TV and use their uh, desktops and their laptops more, whereas kids would use their phones and video games more. But the total amount of time spent staring at glass is about the same. This is a message you repeat over and over, and they'll roll their eyes at you because they've heard you say it a hundred times before. But be prepared to be boring on this one. Don't meet up with people that you don't know. Uh, don't allow yourself to be fooled into, into meeting someone at a mall or something. If uh, someone does want to meet you, you're very happy to go with them, but they're not to meet up with these people on their own. They have to behave. You are concerned about their behavior in the playground and around the house. You also have to be concerned about their behavior online. Even the best behaved kids can have a bit of trouble with impulse control at times. And by the way, the internet is a wonderful place to misbehave. You can annoy people. You can look at things you know you're not supposed to look at. You can join in on harassing people. So here's some lines to use with your kids. Hey, we want you to have a great time online. And we want you to be safe and to enjoy it. And so there have to be some rules. So let them know that it's connected with the liberty and the pleasure that they have is the fact that there is going to be some rules. And so what sort of rules would you set? You, you, first of all, you negotiate what is allowed. I've put up there what's not allowed, but I think it's always best to tell parents, for parents to tell kids what is allowed. You're allowed to go on this site. You're allowed to go on uh, use um, YouTube when it's set on this setting. Okay, you can use this um, this program. You can play games, but only after your only after your homework is done. So tell them what they are allowed to do, but also what they're not allowed to do. They're not allowed to access uh, pornographic sites or violent sites. Uh, they're not allowed to delete their viewing history. And um, if they get a fright, then they have to come and tell you about it. And they won't be in trouble if they tell you. But um, if you discover that they have been into mischief, then they could be trouble. And if they've deleted their viewing logs, then there's automatically going to be trouble. But you also set limits about you know, when and how long they to use their technology, how to take turns if there's more than one child wanting time at a machine. And by the way, an old fashioned clockwork timer, some very ancient technology, you know, that's one of those ones that goes, ticka, 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 ring. Very, very useful in regulating time online. Tell them what to do if they get a fright, not to answer back if they get a har harassing, bullying text or something. Perhaps take a screenshot of it, but don't reply to it. And uh, also let them know, let's talk about what's going to happen if you do break these rules. And you can talk about the penalties that might involve their access to technology, bedtimes, losing some of their liberty, losing some of their pocket money, whatever is appropriate. But let them know that there will be some penalties. Well, that's uh, all I've got for in this. There's, by the way, there's lots and lots of good material online to help parents. Um, NetSafe, a New Zealand organization that's done a lot of work uh, with parents and kids. It's got a heap of resources there. So if you're wanting to find out a bit more, go, go to NetSafe. Also, ParentingPlace.nz, uh, it's got a lot of good uh, general stuff on technology, a lot of stuff in parenting in general. If you're stuck and uh, with your parenting, there's always uh, the free parenting helpline. Don't hesitate to use it. Don't get stuck. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this has been of some use to you. Cheers.